Kitchen. I'm your host, Tina Marie, and today we're joined by Chef Patrick Fury of Nectar Restaurant in Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Welcome back Thank to the show, me. sir. It's, it's always a pleasure to have you, and I, and I love how you infuse everything you do with your little Asian flair. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about what we're cooking today. All right, we're gonna we're gonna kind of do kind of take two recipes and, and make them into one. And first, we're gonna do a miso soup, and okay. that consists of a dashi first, and then you can go on in the direction of what flavor you want the dashi to be, and then therefore it'll kind of give that miso soup that extra flavor that you want. Okay. And then we have a really cool seasonal um, salmon in here, and this yes. is actually called an ivory salmon. It's actually king salmon from Alaska. Um, and they run with the king salmons that come out of the Copper River in Alaska. And the unique thing about them is that uh, they're really, really pale white color, and they have actually um, a really fun uh, flavor to them because it's, like, it's, it's more of like a fleshy, uh, nice flavor to it as opposed to like a, they're less sweet I guess mm -hmm. is a good way to put it. And is this farm raised or line caught? No, no, this is uh, this is wild. Wild? wild? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. and this is a real del delicacy and treat because it's a very limited time window that we can get these, Yeah, correct? yeah it is and also that there's obviously not, not as many of these as there are of the of the regular king salmon. If you look at a king salmon it has almost a red color as opposed to an orange color and yes. this one has a nice pale color and I, I actually approach the cooking it um, very, very similar to a almost like a halibut in that way. Not just because it's just um, not because it's just white, but it has a good fat content in there as well. Uh, so it, it poaches really well, and that's what we're going to do today. Very good. Right. Okay, Thanks. very exciting. Where yeah. do we begin, sir? All right. Well, we're going to get a we're going to have to start on our dashi because that's that's a whole stock and and the dashi is ex essentially you were explaining to me before the right. show is like is the, uh, the the base of the miso soup. Is yeah, that it's the stock. Way to it's it? the stock. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's the it's the stock. It's classic you know, Japanese stock. And I think um, one of the things that's essential to adashi is actually have, have the kumpu, which is a really huge um, seaweed. So kumpu. if you take it out and it's like just really wow. large. Yeah, it's yeah, really cool. Yeah, so look at this. And this could be found at any of our Asian markets, yeah, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Which is great. Yeah. A lot of times um, some people like to use this for a lot. I mean, in Japan they use that all over the place in recipes, whether it's your um, seasoning for your, for your sushi rice, things like that. Okay. So they, they do a really... Okay, yeah, so it's, it's an it's, indispensable ingredient uh, absolutely. in uh, Asian cooking. Right. And I think if you're going to make a dashi for miso soup, the next essential item is the benita, which is mm -hmm. a uh, small cured and smoked uh, fish. Uh, it looks so very similar to a uh, salmon, like a tiny, I'm sorry, a, yes. a tiny tuna. Actually. If I didn't know better, I would uh, think it was a piece of prosciutto on my hand <laughs> exactly. here. Exactly. But interestingly, it's got a wonderful smoky, sea smoky yeah, aroma to it. Exactly, yeah. It's got it's got a really mm. fun um, lingering flavor to it. So that's mm -hmm. um, the one thing you're going to want to do with your dashi if you're going to go forward and make a miso soup with that. Okay. And then we'll, we'll first we'll make we'll get the stock going. Um, I want there to be uh, a shrimp flavor. We need some shrimp garnish also with our um, wild uh, king salmon, yes. ivory king salmon. Uh, the fun thing about these shrimp, these are actually also wild uh, caught fresh off of Georgia. They're also their Atlantic brown Georgia shrimp. They're nice and large. Yeah, they're, they're fun. Very nice. They're good. Okay. Good stuff. So, so let us begin. All right, so we have our shrimp. We peel we peel, and we have our shells. Mm -hmm. you always save your, sh your shells. If you want, you can put them in the freezer so you have them for different types of things that you want. And wanna, they freeze well. They freeze really well. Oh, that's good yeah. to know. So they just bring them out, rinse them off like two or three times, and then, then you can, you're ready to go. Wonderful. Cook them. And also, it's really important that they're dry too, because you don't want them to steam at all when you're when you're roasting them. Okay, they're, that's a great tip. Right, and what's going to add the flavor to the stock is, if you ever take a shrimp and throw it on the barbecue and it gets really crusty and red, and it's got that beautiful sweet flavor, yes. we're going to try to accomplish that with these. Okay. For, for, Using the shells. Yep. Very very so we, nice. So and again, probably say this every time I meet anybody, it's in the first like you know couple of uh, conversations is that make sure your pans are super hot. You're, you're working with really, really hot pans. So we're going to go. You want to hear that snap. That nice sizzle and yep. pop. Yep, exactly. Sound effects in cooking is just as important. And you can kind of tell when you're almost done is that those, they have like the little, uh, the little legs on the bottom of them and they start to get real crispy and super red. Okay. So when they, they start getting crispy and nice like that, um, you know you're right, right almost there. So. So it doesn't take long. I mean, they're very thin, and, and exactly. as long as your pan is hot, yep. nice some shallot, shallots. and uh, just roughly chopped. Just roughly chopped. Okay. Exactly. Um, some some ginger the same way. Ginger. Mm -hmm. Ubiquitous in Asian cooking. Yep. And then some some celery to make it nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is leeks. Um, it's something that that I um, I learned from a chef in New York City who was actually Cambodian that I worked for in a French restaurant. And I think leeks were in everything. And that was really? something that was really, really cool about what we did. Is that, um, 
uh, in direct relation to his Cambodian background, do you believe? I, I, I don't, I think it would have to be, yes. um, because he was a really great classic cook, wonderful man, and, and it was just uh, something that we had in, in, in a lot of us. Yes. And it really did put a nice accent flavor to it. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. There's another one ingredient that I, that I really like in here as well, um, is lemongrass. And mm -hmm. I have some over here. And the one thing about lemongrass that's, that's nice, and I, I usually like to it's got a very, it's not super edible. You can do it. There is a technique to make it edible when you're putting it into a recipe because you got to just cook it ridiculously fine. What I like to do, when I'm, especially when I'm using a soup, is just to take the back of your knife. Yes. And just run it right down the back of it. And what you want to do is start getting those oils out of there. So it starts working the oils. Exactly. So if you were to smell it beforehand and now you smell it, it really Oh, gets yes. It's almost like rubbing a lemon before exactly. you slice it. Exactly. And I, you know, honestly, I'm taking notice of your very unusual, but very interesting knife. Oh, yeah. This actually, this knife is, um, it's actually a Japanese knife. And there's little dimples on it. Yes. And those dimples actually, when you're filleting something and you ever get your knife like kind of stuck, stuck to it, the suction. Yes. This actually really the suction. Great for it. slicing fish, probably, yeah, raw exactly. fish. Yeah. And interesting, it's only on one side. So right. it really mm -hmm. helps. Very, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Next step is we're going to take mm. some, we're going to use water. We're going to make this completely just this fish. Is, this is a vegan yeah, friendly yeah, it's meal. Gonna, yeah, I'm not going to have any. Yeah. Which I, I'm, I'm a fish lover, so I, I, I love what, what you do to fish. We made oh, a thanks. hamachi one time right. not that long ago together, and the Copper River salmon, and now this ivory oh, yeah. salmon. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, and again, you see the amount of water that we put in here. Yes. It's, it's, it's completely covered because this is pretty. It's a short stock. I mean, you don't have to sit there and cook it for three hours. Okay. This will cook in 10 minutes and then you'll be ready to go. Oh, that's great. So yeah. it's very condensed. Everything's exactly. very condensed exactly. in there. And then uh, we're going to take our compute and with this. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what you do with the, how yeah. you handle this here. Okay. And this is pretty easy. It just kind of, we're just going to break off the So piece. it just tears off. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to yeah. drop some in there. Okay. And let that and rehydrate and it's going to go right in there it's going to happen does this add like a salty it gives it i, I think it gives it a really nice um kind of a, um earthy flavor to it in, mm -hmm. a, in a sea way sea way know? right in a <laughs> sea way there's really no better yeah. way to describe that because yeah. the aroma is like that it is it is or, or, almost like a mushroom of the sea exactly yeah you know well, I like that. yeah because I, I think it's um it's got a and it's got a really subtle Yes, it's not strong. It. Yeah, so that's that's what's nice about it. And I Very think interesting. It's why I think it dates back to around like five or six hundred. You know, it's like really they've it's been using it forever. Yeah, yeah. So okay. now we got our our uh, our, our uh, dashi working. Good. And this is actually a dashi right now. Okay. As we speak. In okay. this so present right, state. Right now, yeah. Okay. And now we're gonna if you were gonna stop here and then just strain it and use it as soup and, and add some ingredients to it, that's great. But if we wanted to move forward and go and make a miso soup, we have two more steps that we want okay, to do. Okay, so it could be two separate dishes. Sure. If we want sure. to. If you want okay. to stop here and let it let it simmer for about mm -hmm. ten minutes, strain it out, you got a beautiful soup. You have a soup. Yeah. The what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it into a miso soup, which the essential one of the things is the spinito yes. that we were just talking about. And we're gonna just take a little bit of this. Is this edible in its state yeah, right now? Absolutely. So I would love to taste a little bit of mm -hmm. this. I love that smokiness. Right. Yeah. It's just um It just melts in your mouth. Really, the, just melts in your mouth. The cool thing about it is, if you look at it, it kind of starts to move a little bit. Yes, like it hot. does. Oh my goodness, look at that! And it's, and I it's, hope we can get this with the with the camera. It actually it's looks a, like it's alive. It's an awesome, yeah, and it's actually it's an awesome garnish. Yes. Uh, as well, you put it in there and it starts moving, especially if you have. This some, is so exciting. Yeah, it's pretty. This cool. really would delight <laughs> your guests. Do you serve? Oh, yeah. Do you serve anything yeah, you like can, this in, in the well, restaurant? Well, actually, I'll show you when we're done. We'll yes. Do something a little fun with it. And, How and tour, exciting! Yeah. So that's that's pretty fun. So now our soup is alive. We're gonna move over to our fish and let's get that going. Okay, we're gonna, let's we're gonna see need what to do with this get our poaching here. liquid going. Just okay. straight water. We're gonna keep this we have like 15 that minutes, exactly. Chef. And then so what we're gonna do from there is we're just going to um, drop ginger. So flavor our yep. poaching liquid. Exactly. Then. Thyme, peppercorns, bay leaf. So we got the rajou, which is actually it's it's essentially rajou uh, blanc. Yeah. So it's actually um, literally just grape juice, but it's kind of 
between wine and vinegar. So it's got a kind of a sweet, nice flavor. And it's non alcoholic, you yeah, said? Yeah, it is. It is non alcoholic. So is it in lieu of a white wine? Maybe? In lieu of a white wine. And I, I kind of wanted something to blend really well with the next ingredient that we're going to use in our poaching liquid, which is yuzu. Yuzu. Yeah, yuzu is a, a fruit uh, a, from a Japanese tree. Mm -hmm. um, and it's super, super. I guess lime would be the closest, but it's a super, super citrusy. Yes. Definitely make it pucker. Very strong citrus <laughs> scent. Yeah, yeah. And it's, if mm. you were to take the compu, that, and take rice wine, um, and, and mirin, that yes. would be the seasoning that you would use for your sushi rice after okay. you cook it. So okay. we pull that together. So With some, are, this adds some sweetness. Well, it actually had some, some citrus. Ah, yeah, okay. More so than even sweetness. Because it would be the mirin that would add the sweetness. And you said very, very strong on its own. On so its, own. It's, it's best it's, used as an ingredient, right? Yeah, yeah okay. it's great. It's a great practical joke with the kids. Is it? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> trick this kid. Just kidding, I don't do that. <laughs> Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. Now that we got our Poach and licking going, that's yes. ready to go. This is about ready. So we're gonna take our salmon down and then we're gonna drop it in here and poach it. Wonderful. Okay, so so we got our salmon. And you just, like, you know, again, um, I, you know, there's there's definitely, to get this particular salmon, if you're yes. not a restaurant or something, right. um, there's a, there's definitely a, a bunch of companies that you can work with, such as like Rod Mitchell out of uh, Maine. Right. Um, he has Brown Trading. Friend so, of the show, of course. Yeah, and he, he would be able to get it to you and, and ship it to you. So, so if we do our research, yeah, we can exactly. find... Okay. I think you can just, you know, Google it. So we're going to just... And essentially right now, what, what, what exactly are you doing? You're, what, you're... what I'm doing is I'm just taking off this, this belly part. Mm -hmm. And again, never throw this away because this is great stuff for spicy ivory salmon. So we're going to just take this down. We're going to want a nice cut right in the middle. We're going to leave the skin on this. The skin has actually been scaled. Okay. And I like the skin on, especially when I'm poaching uh, fish because it really keeps the integrity of the fish together. Okay. So uh, if you don't, a lot of times, especially, you know, if you're doing a cod or something like that, they have a tendency to kind of fold apart. Yes, break apart, break yeah, up. Right. Okay. So we definitely want to do this. And we'll, we'll say a little trick that we can do with the skin bef before we plate it that if you don't want it, you can just peel it right off. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. So. And you do this. a lot of with so raw got, fish. Oh, wonderful. Now, about what size is this? Like a, an entree size portion? This is yeah. This is pretty big portion. Okay. This is actually probably about a six ounce portion. This is quite big for mm -hmm. this. So we're gonna take a little piece off. We're gonna use that for our spicy later, and we have a nice piece. And especially when you're when you're poaching, I kind of like to have a little dense piece of that. So we're gonna yes. drop this in right now. Just so it's completely immersed in our poaching liquid, which right. has been so beautifully enhanced by right. all the wonderful ingredients you've added to it. And, and another thing with this, I really like to um, like cook this to like medium rare to rare. Okay. That's my personal taste of it. And especially when you tr start trying this salmon, you're, you're really going to want it that way. But again, it's up to the person. Yes. And it. should it be a little maybe pink in the center? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we want a lot yeah. pink in the center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to now take our dashi liquid and we're going to turn down. that. Very yep. condensed now. Yep. And we're going to turn this into a miso soup. Okay. Very so. good. And how do we tell, how long does it take for the fish to poach? For the fish to poach? Um, usually about five minutes. Would you like me to get any of that out of there I for think you? It's all right. Okay. Yeah, we good. Very good. So really not long for the fish then? No, not at all. Okay. So this is our... This is our dashi. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it smells is, beautiful. It's really good, yeah. Mm. If we can, here, would you like to taste it? I would okay. love to taste it. Oh, did you ask? The one thing is, if you notice, that I really like to season really, really well and things like that. And with this particular broth, it's, it's always good to season a little bit. But with this, you don't want to season it if you're going to make a miso soup. With the dashi. Right. You don't want to season it only because of when you start putting into your miso paste. It has that's, a saltiness to it. Sure, so that's so. going to add all that salt. That's because right. right now in this present it's very clean, clean very pure. Exactly. I'm, I'm wanting just, some salt though. Absolutely. You know, I'm, absolutely. I'm a you salt girl, yep. so I like I like salt. But again, you're you promising me with the miso. Uh huh. <laughs> this is a pale miso, mm -hmm. which it has a less nutty flavor to it. But I really like the fermentation omra, uh, like omra. Oh, or, and I can't get enough of this. And um, what you, what's nice about it is that um, it almost smells like. It's floral, I, yeah. uh, but fruity. Yep. So we gotta, we're going to get our miso mm. paste. We're and this take... is the white. So this one is the white miso. Right, right. And it, if you, you could get it in medium, you said, or right. dark. Right. And medium it, it, dark. And really the color of it changes. Exactly. With, with... Yeah, and you can get, there's, there's probably about 
five or six different colors. I can't colors. get enough of that aroma. Yeah, I, I almost want to buy a candle. I wish <laughs> they came up with a white miso candle. It is. Right? It is really nice. So we're going to make some uh, fun fun garnishes for our, for our soup. Tofu goes hand in hand with dashi because tofu and miso are also... Or, One's a soybean paste, one's a soybean curry. Right, they're, so, they're brother and sister. Yep. Uh, talking about fish, you have a wonderful sushi bar at Nectar. We do, yeah. I enjoy Nectar. My only complaint Thanks. is that it's not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know. I wish every suburban area would have a, a, a place like Nectar. Really, really if great. If I can yeah, figure, out, figure out a way to, uh, to like be Reproduce. two places in one. Yes, <laughs> so the truth. Maybe I'll get my, uh, get my son and my daughter going. That's it. Yeah. That's so, the key. So we're going to just take our, our dashi here. And what I want to do with this is actually garnish it in the pot to get the garnish hot. So okay, so heating here. through just just through that the tofu right, and then we've got the because shrimp tra because traditionally how we see miso served most of the time. Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna take some shrimp as well. Pop them in there. Just drop them in there. Oops, there we go. Very good. So those are gonna be ready in a second. So now we're gonna pull out our our uh, salmon in the water, because that's oh. ready to go. So our salmon looks ready. Is there a way to feel, uh, to know when it's reached the a right? A little bit. You kind of get used to it. But yes, a little the bit. look but, of it, I'm sure. But one thing about it is that you really want it to low... It looks like a piece of you, tofu. You want, a, you want a low simmer, because what what can happen, and you don't see as much on this salmon, but you will see on other salmon, is that if it's really boiling and yes. everything, you're going to start seeing some white um, uh -huh. bean come out. And you don't want that. You want it to cook really, really slowly. So you really want it at a low simmer when you're doing this. Okay, to keep the consistency the same throughout. That's I love right. how it's that beautiful white color. Yeah, it's, it's it really so cool. does look like a piece of tofu. It is really cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more of today's recipe. And then um, we're going to just bring this up. We're about ready to. You actually serve this in a soup bowl. And the, That's right. the miso actually mm -hmm. serves as the sauce for our salmon. Exactly. Beautiful way of presenting it, Chef. So, again, like, you know, a shrimp are the same way. You just want to cook them just, mm -hmm. just to the point of where. Is this on the menu at Nectar? It's in, in components. Okay. Yeah. Oh, in <laughs> so components. You, I like that. Well, you components. have so many components <laughs> yeah. at Nectar. Yeah. You're, I always talk about your expansive menu. You right. have so many items on your menu, mm -hmm. in, including a whole, full sushi bar. Right. Uh, right. So it, it's, it's oh, very yeah. easy to go back 30 times and never order the same thing. That's I, Yeah, I think that's a lot to it. I think that we have, you know, we have everything from, you know, a lot of people talk about the wine list, or but yes. also the beer list, and also, you know, our drinks, and also the food. And I like to think the restaurant is really eclectic, because I like to use a lot of the classic techniques but not too not getting too crazy with mixing things because really when you start with a dish like this poaching something is really simple and nice yes. you know but you don't want to get too so we're gonna and i heard that there's actually a new beer that you're launching is that correct? there is there is it's called fist of fury fist of fury yeah. i like the name my brother and i and uh, bill kavlaski of victory um, and he really Victory kind of made Brewing it happen. Your room company, and he actually made it happen, and we just put it out this week. So we'll be bottling it in about two weeks. <gasps> How exciting! Yeah, it's an available pale. in the restaurant. It's at, at the restaurant. Yeah, absolutely. And also at liquor stores as well, or um, no, no, just at the just restaurant. Oh, so we, another so making, <laughs> reason to visit Nectar. Yeah. That's all I needed. And I'm making uh, different beer menus every night and changing up things with it, so you can pair with it. So it's been really, really fun. People That's really wonderful. And it. pairing them with your Asian menu too. Asian right. beers are really great. I think beer with with Asian food is really well. Yes. Especially when you're smelling that miso, it really just reminds me of that. Well, the as fermentation well. And, and, yeah. and the miso, the paste. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of similar think, flavors going on. I think it's um. It's yeah. It's beer. Beer and food is really good. And the, and this, that particular beer, it's an English pale ale, okay. but we made it really dry and not like you know not so much of a beer geek beer. Yeah. But I think that it's you know a lot of people even that if they're not super into beer, it's a very dry beer, so it doesn't have a lot of aftertaste to that. And, it does, and it's very low in hops as well. So, so you're garnishing with some beautiful so this fresh is, herbs. Yeah, these are herbs. We have an herb garden in the back of the restaurant. We grow all mm -hmm. our own herbs during the summer, and we have uh, flat parsley, which is one of my favorite herbs of mm -hmm. all time. And then this is actually um, cilantro, and it's it really went, it's flowered. seeded and flowered. Flower and cilantro. And really, that's one thing about cilantro when you have it in your garden. It's like it just keeps seeding, and you're like, yes. now I have nothing left. I just have the stick. And but if you just let it flower and use the flower, it's got really more of a coriander flavor because it is the same. It's less intense for me. Right. People don't love cilantro, and there's right. some it's out more there of a that coriander don't. flavor, and they have a really nice floral flavor to it. I think one thing, again, with this dish is like, you know, having a little bit of scallions as well. Mm, and fresh. Right. And if you notice that we just folded back the, um, the, 
the actual skin itself. So if you're if you're someone that's not you know a fan of it, just peel it off. It's good. It's a great way to know you can easily peel it off. Right, right. Exactly. I like those little cues to the diner. Yep. Exactly. Are we ready to taste the chef? Absolutely. Oh, so let's bring this over. And as your menu says, approach love and cooking with reckless abandon. That's right, I love that's right. that statement. Yeah, it's on your menu that's and. Right. I think it's so true. I have to give the uh, Dalai Lama that, that credit. The Dalai Lama, that's exactly <laughs> right. But you've repeated it and encourage yep. us to enjoy with all our hearts. And again, like, you know, if you just get that little bit of, mm. and it's almost like, what's nice about having it medium rare, you can dip it back into the soup. Yes, and you can. And cook it a little bit. Well, the thing is, it has the same texture as the tofu, mm -hmm. which I love. I enjoyed it with just it a piece is. of tofu. I'm gonna have actually some of the soup. Mm -hmm. And you see how this mm. all came through. The flavors are so mild mm -hmm. and gentle right. and easy on, that's why I love Asian cooking for, mm -hmm. for, this, for yeah. this way. And your many years at Susanna Fu, mm -hmm. you know, right. I really helped prepare for Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy a, some more. Great cook. And Chef Patrick Fury, thank you so much you very for much. joining us okay. today. Right. Reckless Abandon, that's right. let's go to let's it. Go. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks. The Restaurant School is the exclusive partner of the Chef's Kitchen for the education and training in the culinary arts. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. Craft services provided by Garces Trading Company, a European-style gourmet market where you can enjoy delicious bistro fare in a bright, airy setting. Flowers on the set provided by Nature's Gallery Florist, distinctive floral arrangements with European flair. For the viewer who is passionate about food and wine, the Chef's Kitchen provides tips and techniques from the country's most exclusive restaurants. Tune in next time to see one of the nation's top chefs such as George Perrier, Roberto Donna, Jose Garces, Michael Schlau, or Tony Clark as they share their culinary talents and unique creativity. Learn how to make the delectable dishes and hip creations they're serving in today's restaurants or impress your family with a culinary twist on tonight's dinner. Check our website for listings in your area or today's recipe. As a cook, I get inspired because of, it kind of changes pace. It's not like I'm in I'm in my restaurant with the four walls, but I come out and, and I kind of think out of the box. There's just an expectation of doing something really fun, and it kind of pushes you a little bit with that. Knowing Stephen for a long time, he's just he's just a great, generous person, and, and I just really like you know working with him and and, and his crew as well.